Good morning, everyone. It's good to have you this morning in the house of the Lord. Glad that you're here. Grab a hymnal, please. Turn to hymn number 335. Hymn number 335. <clears throat> and if you can, let's all stand, would you? Showers of blessing. Come on, sing it with me together on the first. Here we go. There shall be showers of blessings. This is the promise of love. There shall be seasons refreshing sent from the Savior above. Shower, <clears throat> showers of blessings we need. Mercy drops round us are falling. But for the showers we plead on the last, there shall be showers of blessing. Oh, that today they might fall. Now as to God we're confessing. Now as on Jesus we call. Showers of blessings. Showers of blessings we need. Mercy drops round us are falling. But for the showers we Well, good job this morning. Uh, Brother Jack, you want to lead us in prayer? I sure do. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this day you've given to us. And as always, Lord, we pray your blessing upon the whole day. And Lord, your will be done. And ask you to bless in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated now. Let's grab another hymnal. Hymn number 391, hymn number 391. I'd rather have Jesus. Would to God that would be our prayer this year, that we'd have uh, Jesus more than anything else. Sing it with me on the first, hymn number 391. I'd rather have Jesus than silver or gold. I'd rather be His than have riches untold. I'd rather have Jesus than houses or lands. I'd rather his nailed pierced hand than to be the king of a vast domain or be held in sin's dread sway I'd rather have Jesus than anything this this world affords today. On the last, sing it together. He's fairer than lilies of rarest bloom. He's sweeter than honey from out the comb. He's all that my hunger spirit needs I'd rather have Jesus and let him lead than to be the king of a vast domain or be held in sin's dread sway I'd rather have Jesus than anything this world affords today. Amen. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Cindy. Appreciate that very much. And uh, hope everyone's doing well today. 
and uh, we're glad that you're here. Ones that are home, we're glad you're tuned in as well this morning. Uh, we want to try to get through the book of uh, the third chapter of the book of da Daniel today, but um, at the conclusion, uh, uh, we'll, we'll explain it when we get there. But uh, I don't think it'll take very long for us to get through with that. But uh, I want to uh, just uh, give you some uh, prayer requests that we had Wednesday night. Uh, Michelle's uh, Sam's sister, is her name Pat? Pat Coombs? Coombs, okay. Coon, just one Coon. Just one? Okay, all right. Uh, she had fractured uh, her face, bones in her face, and uh, they're just going to let it heal on its own, no surgery. And so uh, that'll be probably be a long, long haul for her. Uh, Jackie Short's sister, her husband passed away, and so pray for them, if you will. Uh, pastor's friend in Texas, uh, the Beechams, uh, they are seriously ill with COVID down there, and the preacher knows them. They, he pray, want us to pray for the family there. And then uh, Becky and uh, Jim are ex have been exposed to COVID, and uh, they're not here. Maybe they'll come later, I don't know. Uh, but anyway, pray for them, and Miguel, uh, he is, has COVID as well, and so pray for them. Sandy Hopper uh, has an ankle injury, and so uh, keep her in your mind, if you will. And then there's several that's been quarantined and away uh, in, uh, in the home, and so uh, continue praying for them. Uh, pray for the uh, church and pastor and uh, leaders of our church, and, and then praying for one another as well, and, you know, uh, our uh, shut-ins, remember to pray for them. It's on the back of your bulletin. And so uh, continue praying for them and maybe send them a letter and, or a phone call if, if uh, the phone is handy. Sometimes it changes and, and we don't know about it. And so uh, uh, just uh, uh, continue praying for them, if you will. Pray for our country. Pray for our president, leadership. Uh, we're supposed to pray for them. And so we just pray that God's will will be done. Uh, the, the Lord has a purpose for uh, the United States of America. And so keep that in mind as you pray uh, that the Lord's will will be done. And then uh, pray, pray for the military, if you will, and the policemen. Uh, pray for them, the very difficult, hard jobs. And then our missionary, uh, pray for them missionaries. We had uh, the Spoolstra. A uh, uh, letter was read on Wednesday, and then I noticed that uh, uh, Bruce Turner family is is the one that has it's in the bulletin, so you can read about that as well. Uh, the Spoolstra, uh, his wife is will be having surgery, Joanna. So uh, keep that in mind, if you will, and pray for and pray for the other missionaries as well as God. Uh, brings them to your mind. Uh, just pray for them. Do we have any new prayer requests in this section here? Anyone? Okay. Anybody else? How about in the FARC? With COVID? Okay. All right. Anybody else? Yes. Unspoken? Anybody else? Okay. All right. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we are grateful and thankful that we can approach your throne at any time, knowing our needs, Lord. We should be coming often and, and Lord, asking you to bless. And, and uh, Lord, we, we pray your blessing upon the ones uh, that are, the names have been called this morning. Uh, you know their need. You know what they need, Lord. And we're just dependent upon you uh, to uh, do your will. Your will be done in their life. And they so be, uh, you would raise them up and, and help them, encourage them, and strengthen them and to be with them. Lord, we, we just pray uh, that your, your precious will will be done. Uh, bless our Sunday school hour in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. All right. We'll uh, turn in your Bible, if you will, uh, to Daniel, Daniel chapter 3. And as mentioned a while ago, um, we're... Uh, 
I hope to get through chapter 3. You know there's been uh, so much uh, in chapter 3 and, and uh, I, I'm not giving you all, all of the things uh, that uh, has happened uh, for the simple reason we'd probably not get through in two years time. I went through the book of Proverbs verse by verse and it took me two years to get through uh, the, uh, the book of uh, uh, Proverbs. And so, uh, you know, this is a, a difficult book. And if you're going to study it, you really have to go into other Old Testament books of the Bible uh, to really understand what is, uh, is happening because uh, Jeremiah and, and Isaiah and some of the other uh, they have a bearing upon the book of Daniel as well as the New Testament and the book of uh, the Gospels. Uh, they have uh, quite a bit to say about the, uh, the book of Daniel. Uh, and so uh, it's quite in-depth if you'd go into it and study it. And, of course, uh, I know that would be uh, impossible for us to do. Uh, but if you remember when we, uh, our last uh, uh, lesson... Uh, we were uh, in uh, verse 8 uh, of uh, Daniel chapter 3, and we see the accusation against uh, the, uh, the Jews, the, all the Jews. Uh, uh, these Chaldeans were the ones that uh, uh, accused the whole Jewish uh, remnant uh, that they were not bowing down. And then, of course, as you look in verse 8 through 12, you begin to see that they, uh, that the Chaldeans uh, pointed to three, uh, just three of them, and of course I believe that was because they were in positions of authority and uh, positions that uh, uh, that uh, Nebuchadnezzar had placed uh, them in at that particular time, and whether it was through jealousy or whatever, and of course uh, uh, the the three uh, the three. Uh, well, the four, really, uh, had showed up the, the wise men of that day and they couldn't do this and they couldn't do that. Uh, but uh, we see that the, the accusation was made uh, against uh, Daniel and the three, uh, the, or the three, rather. And by the way, in the third chapter, Daniel is not mentioned. And so I don't know why, I think we mentioned that before. I don't know where he was at, but he wasn't uh, there at this particular time. He'll show up in chapter 4, and so, but we don't know where he was at. And this time it's just the three, uh, the three Hebrew children that were, uh, uh, that were accused of not bowing down. And then, of course, we see then verse 13 through 18, if you'll remember that, where we see the refusal of the three. They refused to uh, uh, just to uh, bow down they, uh, in no uncertain terms and, and being very emphatic on, the, on that, that they just was not going to bow down. And then, of course, uh, in our verse, uh, verses today, uh, really it goes from verse 19 all the way down to verse 28, and we'll be looking at that uh, you know, maybe a little bit more uh, closely. But I, I believe everybody is familiar with the fiery furnace. I, I, you know, I don't know of anybody that's saved uh, uh, I'm talking about uh, that are, is familiar with the fiery furnace. So uh, we'll be able to go through it a little bit easier than we would. Uh, but we see the deliverance in these verses of Scripture, how that God delivered uh, the three faithful men uh, that, uh, that God had placed there in that position, and uh, they were faithful men, that they just simply uh, were not going to bow. And so God, we, we began to see how that God is going to uh, deliver these, uh, these ones out of the fiery furnace. And, of course, we see uh, that as the beginning they stood firm, uh, very firm. They refused to worship the image, the golden image that was before them, and of course, while uh, which um, Nebuchadnezzar has set up. You know, it keeps on in chapter three. It talks about the image that ne uh, that uh, uh, that uh, Nebuchadnezzar set up. Uh, I'm sure he had it built 
uh, but he set it up to the point in Dura and all like that. And so uh, we see that in the image uh, that Nebuchadnezzar had set up, these three children, and I've always said this, uh, we see the three would not budge. Uh, we see they, they would not bend. Uh, they wouldn't budge. They wouldn't bend. And uh, certainly they were not going to bow. And then, of course, uh, we see that they didn't burn either. And so we see that's primarily uh, what is about the fiery furnace. And so uh, we see here in these verses of Scripture how that it's a great miracle a great miracle that God performed uh, of all people. Uh, he performed it for uh, the heathens of that day, the idolaters. Uh, you know, you'd think that God would uh, show that uh, to, uh, to God's people instead of that, but we see that he has a reason for that. And, of course, the ones that were there, the remnant and the three, uh, I'm sure, uh, experienced the same thing. And so... We see that it was a miracle. Uh, but the greater miracle uh, about the fiery furnace is this. The greater miracle was uh, when they were walking about. Uh, they were walking about. Look at verse 24, if you will. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished and rose up in haste and spake and said unto the, his counselors, Did not we cast three men bound in the midst of the fiery furnace? They answered and said unto the king, O uh, the king, truth, O king. And he answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire, and they, uh, they have no hurt. The, uh, the form of the fourth is like unto the Son of God. And so here we see uh, that uh, the, real, the real miracle, I think the greater miracle, is that some way, I don't know whether the uh, the one that's likened unto the Son of God, loosed them uh, from it or the fire burned it off of them. But anyway, we see that they were walking in the fiery furnace. And uh, you look at that and, and immediately uh, you see that they were not trying to get out of the fiery furnace. They were walking around. Uh, the, uh, you know, you can almost see them uh, saying, hey, we've never done this before. We've got something to tell our children that we're walking about in fire and it's not even bothering us at all. We're loose. Uh, somehow they got loose and they were walking around and enjoying whoever it was. And I, I believe the fourth man uh, in there, the likened unto the Son of God, is none other than the Lord Jesus Christ. And you see him, uh, you know, in... Uh, uh, I think it's in the book of Joshua, uh, where that, uh, the Lord appeared as the captain. And, and so he has, a, 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 the Lord has come about a, a, a showing himself uh, in the Old Testament times. And, and so here we, I believe that it was. And they were enjoying probably his fellowship and all like that. And so uh, uh, it was a, a, a tremendous thing. Uh, but, you know, God had promised uh, the people, of, of the Jewish people, that what he would do under certain circumstances. Turn in your Bible, if you will, to Isaiah. Isaiah chapter uh, 40, uh, 43. Isaiah chapter 43. And look at, uh, well, I will read verse 1, but verse 2 is what I want you to look at. But now... Thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel. Fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by, by thy name. Thou art mine. And then in verse 2 it says, When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. Uh, through the rivers, uh, they shall not overflow thee. Uh, when thou walkest uh, through the fire, thou shalt not be burned neither shall the flames kindle up against thee. And so here we see the promise of God was fulfilled uh, in the three Hebrew children. It was fulfilled in them and the, the promise of God uh, calling that. And they were preserved, the preservation of the three Hebrew young men at that particular time. 
And, and of course, uh, you know, uh, in the Bible, and I was looking at this, and I believe it's worthy of looking into. Uh, but you, did you know uh, that we, uh, God is a God of fire in the Old Testament? Uh, we, we see that, and of course in Hebrews, uh, you'll, you'll find in chapter 12, and about the last part of chapter 12, uh, where the Bible says, for our God is a consuming fire. Is a consuming fire. And of course, you'll have to go back into the context uh, to get what it's talking about there. But we'll not take the time to do that. But I want you to realize uh, that God has dealt with fire uh, in, in different situations at different times. You know, there's people that believe the book of Daniel and the third chapter uh, is, not, is not true. It was made up. It was written by Daniel, and he just made up a story, and it, it, uh, uh, and it come about being a legend in that time. It wasn't really true. But I'm telling you what God placed in his word is true. It's true. And the words are faithful. And what he says there, and so we see the God of the fire. And, of course, the Bible tells us about that, and we'll quickly go through. If you got a pen and a paper, uh, you might want to write these uh, verses down uh, if you're interested in it. Uh, but, uh, or the book, uh, maybe you got an uh, envelope there and, and a pencil, and you can write these scriptures down. But in Exodus chapter 3, and it, it extends from verse 1 all the way down to verse 4 uh, of particular, we see that God, uh, God is present in the fire. And, of course, we know what that's about. Moses and the burning bush. That the bur a bush was not consumed, but God's presence was in that fire. And, of course, he gave information to, uh, to Moses about certain things and, 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 and we'll... we'll Again, we won't have time to go through that. But if you would look in Exodus chapter 13 and verses 22, 21, 22, around that, we'll see God's leadership, how God led with the fire. And, of course, it said the pillar of clouds by day. He was going to take them through the wilderness, and there would be a, 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 cloud, a pillar of cloud in the daytime. And then we see that the fire... Uh, would be in the evening to guide them and to lead them in the pathway that they should go. And so here we see that God, uh, God's presence comes in fire. Uh, God's leadership comes in fire at a particular time. And, of course, we know from Exodus chapter 19 uh, where that we see that, and it goes on into chapter 20 as well, but you will notice uh, there that the law was given. And, of course, uh, Moses went up on the mount and the fire and all like that. You're from, probably familiar with that, that God gave the law. The law was given uh, by God in, in the fire. And, and so you, you can go on and on in, in the scriptures, Genesis uh, 19, uh, where we see that God punishes. Uh, God does consume. And he consumed uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. And then we see that also in Leviticus chapter 10, uh, where that we see that God, uh, the fire fell upon uh, Nahum and, ba and, uh, and Abihu. Uh, we see that in, in the scriptures, how that he destroyed them. And then, of course, the one that I always enjoy is 1 Kings chapter 8, uh, where that we find... Uh, the, uh, the, the, I, I want to call it the battle uh, between uh, uh, Baal and, and Elijah's God where, where you'll see that Elijah and Ahab come together and they wanted to find out whose God was real. And, and of course, you know about that, how that uh, uh, eventually they put sacrifices out and, and Elijah said the one that God consumes with fire is the, is the true one. And so, of course, um, Elijah, his uh, uh, sacrifice was consumed uh, by, uh, by fire. And so 
here, here we see that God at a particular time, and look, if you go back in the Old Testament again in our chapter, chapter 3 of the book of Daniel, and how that we see uh, that in these verses of Scripture, look at verse 25, if you will. We see that in verse 25, it says, And he answers and said, Lo, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they had no hurt, and the form of the fourth was like unto the Son of God. And so here we see that God protects. God protects in the fire. And, of course, we see that Nebuchadnezzar saw all of this taking place. He, and not only that, but, you know, it was during the ceremony of the, of the dedication and the worship of the image. Uh, you will remember that. And, of course, all of that come to a complete stop. I mean, it was, it was, they put a damper on uh, the image and, and the ceremony that, uh, that was supposed to be something big for Nebuchadnezzar. Uh, but the focus was coming up on uh, the, the fiery furnace and the things that took place there. And, of course, you'll read in your Bible where the, the Bible tells us that everybody that was congregated there for the ceremony saw all of this take place along with Nebuchadnezzar. He saw God in the fire. And we see that God, uh, we see that he looked down and he saw uh, God uh, uh, protecting his own. And, uh, and I'm sure that these things that uh, Nebuchadnezzar experienced uh, brings about the fourth chapter. And I can't hardly wait to get to the fourth chapter because it's a good one. Uh, it ends up uh, in a tremendous way, and we'll be looking at it maybe next week or whenever we get through it. Uh, but he saw in, in verse uh, 22, uh, if you go back and look at that, there is... Uh, therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent and the, and the fire exceeding hot, the flames of the fire threw, uh, slew those men that took up uh, uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And so we see uh, that as, as, and you know, uh, it really didn't move uh, Nebuchadnezzar all that much that his uh, mighty men, were, uh, were slain uh, just being over the fire furnace. Uh, they were slain. And, of course, little was said about that. But here we see he, he realized that God punishes in the fire. And that was the first thing that Nebuchadnezzar saw outside of his prote God protecting his own. And then we see that in verse 25, uh, again, you'll read that, and you'll see uh, he saw God... Uh, God's presence, the four, uh, three uh, men, three uh, Hebrew uh, children, and the fourth man, the God's presence was with, with him. And then, of course, in Daniel chapter 3 and verse 25, we've already looked at that. We see God's protection. And all of these things uh, that Nebuchadnezzar saw, and then look at verse 27. And the princes, the governors, the captains, and the, the king's counselors, uh, being gathered together, saw these men upon whose body the fire had no, uh, no power, nor was the hair of their head singed, neither were their coats uh, changed, nor the smell of fire had passed on them. And so here we see uh, they, uh, all of them, all the, everybody that was congregated, uh, can you just imagine what they saw? Did it have any effect upon them? We were not told. The only effect that we know was upon Nebuchadnezzar. But I'm sure that after they experienced all of this, that, uh, that they began to realize that they were worshiping the wrong god. And, of course, they had many gods. Uh, and, you know, they could add to, take away, whatever. Uh, like some people do today, they add gods and they take away gods and, and just different things like that. But here we see uh, that uh, God's power was experienced by Nebuchadnezzar and all the rest of them began to see what God was doing. I'm telling you folks, we have got a God 
that's in control. We have a miraculous God that can do anything. Nothing is impossible with God. And we need to realize that. Many times we read in the Old Testament, and what we do is we just separate that uh, from the New Testament and from other things and forget all about our God. But in the Old Testament, uh, many things are revealed about God Almighty that you're not going to find in the New Testament uh, in, in this uh, clear way. And so we must look at the Old Testament to find out who God really is. And of course, the fire is one of God's attributes that he uses and things like that. Uh, but then we see in verse uh, 29 and 30, let's read that if you will. Uh, Therefore I make a decree that every pe people, nation, and, and language which spake anything amidst against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces, and their house shall be made a dunghill, because there is no, no other God uh, that can deliver after this sort. And so we see once again uh, Nebuchadnezzar has come about, and of course you have to realize this about 20, 25 years later, he had all forgotten about the God uh, that he, you know, he said, if you, you worship any other God, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kill you and, and make your house a dung hill and all like that. This has been repeated uh, in, this, in, the, in chapter 2. Uh, but here we see the uh, decree that ne of Nebuchadnezzar, and, and then it goes on to say, then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the providence of uh, Babylon. And so here we find uh, that uh, uh, in verse 29, Nebuchadnezzar uh, makes a public announcement that declares that anyone who would speak against uh, the three, uh, the three uh, uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, uh, if they speak out against him and in, uh, God in any way, then they're going to die. And it was the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego uh, that we see that uh, that took place. And of course, uh, we see that Nebuchadnezzar in these verses of scripture uh, recognizes that the power of God uh, was greater than anything in, in, in the whole uh, realm of uh, Babylon, the Babylon Empire. Every god that they were worshiping, we see that Nebuchadnezzar come to the point in place when he says there's no other god like the god of Meshach, uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. There's no other God like that in all the world. And of course, we see that in verse 30, we see the promotion again. We, we, the three have already been promoted. But here we see again, it says, uh, King promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the providence of Babylon. And so here we find that they were being promoted once again because of what they had experienced. And, and, of course, that was one of the ways that they would honor God, the, the God of Shadrach and Meshach. I'm sure that, they, uh, that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego didn't say, yeah, look, look what we did. No, no, no. I believe that they were just like Daniel that realized and recognized uh, that God had delivered them, that it was God that did that, not themselves, not Nebuchadnezzar, not anybody but God. And, of course, you know, we, we need to praise God as well. In the day in which we live, he might not be doing the miracles, but God is doing things in our life and for us uh, that needs to be told and people uh, told about our God and things like that. Uh, well, look, looking at the overall chapter 3, we have some time, and I'd, I'd like to go into that, if you will. Uh, we see that uh, when we first started uh, in, in the book of Daniel, I, I pointed out uh, the, fact that, uh, uh, that the fact that the book of Daniel is a book of, of history, and if, you, if you've been with us, you'll remember that. It's history, 
And, of course, we went through history, uh, the kingdoms that, uh, that were uh, upon the earth at that particular time and how God uh, did away with them and other, kingdo- uh, other empires come about. And so it's about history and then prophecy. And we mentioned that, that the book of Daniel is about prophecy. And, of course, we see uh, prophecy at times. Uh, prophecy can be clear. You know, when, like in, in uh, chapter 2, uh, that was pretty clear about the prophecy that took place in chapter, in chapter 2. But in, in this chapter, uh, we see that, and this includes not only chapter 3, but it includes other times, uh, prophecy will be in type. Now, what I mean is uh, the particular things represent something that is in the future, not now, not during uh, Daniel's lifetime, but later on. And I'm sure there's a lot of things that God told Daniel and the other three uh, that they didn't understand. They didn't understand what was taking place because it was a a prophecy about the last days. And, of course, Daniel uh, had nothing to do with the last days. And we can understand it more than Daniel ever thought about understanding because we have, we're looking at it as it, uh, it progresses in, in our lives. Uh, we're a part of the prophecy uh, that, Daniel, uh, that Daniel prophesied in the Old Testament. We are living prophecy. And, of course, for future prophecies uh, we don't know much about, but as time goes on, uh, we'll understand more and more if, we, if God doesn't take us home to be with the Lord, but we'll understand more about it. And so we see that in chapter 3 uh, that it is not as clear as it would be in chapter 2 that we've already covered. And so uh, we find uh, that future events is going to be taking place uh, in prophecy and the type. Uh, and, of course, here we see that Nebuchadnezzar is a type of Antichrist. He is a type of Antichrist who will bring all religions together. That's what Nebuchadnezzar was trying to do, bringing all of his empire, and he called it the whole world. He thought he ruled the whole world, and he was going to try to make a one, uh, one uh, world a religion for them, and, of course, that is what Antichrist will do, uh, bringing and, and demanding that the people will worship will worship, uh, all all the people will come together and they'll worship at at the image and and things of this nature. And so Nebuchadnezzar is Antichrist, which you'll find in the the book of Revelation. And you'll remember some of those uh, places uh, because we look, uh, we've been through the Revelation twice, and so we're familiar with it, but we see that all the people will come together. And they will. The image in Daniel chapter 3 is a type of the image that will be erected by the Antichrist and set up in the Jewish temple. Look, if you will, in, uh, in, in the New Testament, uh, Matthew chapter 24. And, and notice uh, in uh, chapter 24, and, and God calls this uh, in, in verse uh, 15, He says, the abomination of desolation. That's what the image is going to be. And look at verse 15. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place, who readeth, let him understand. And of course he was talking to the children of Israel at this particular time. But we see that it has relationship, the abomination of desolation. Uh, brought up into the temple, and of course there's more involved in that. When that image is set up, they'll be blaspheming against God. Uh, there's no other God but, uh, but the Antichrist, the beast, and the false prophet, and all of them uh, go together during the last days. And so we see that the Antichrist will uh, erect the, uh, this image, and, and Satan is going to give uh, the image power where that the image will be able to speak. It will speak. 
And of course, you'll find that in Revelation chapter 13 and, and so on. And, and, but in, uh, we see that uh, if you go back and look at chapter 3, you would see that the, the beginning of the, uh, of the time of the Gentiles are in chapter 3. And then we see the, uh, the uh, ending of it is in the book of Revelation. Revelation chapter 13, uh, where the Gentile rule is going to end. It will not last forever and ever. And, of course, that will mark the last uh, of the uh, Gentiles' rule. And it's been going on ever since, if you'll remember, back in Matthew chapter 13, when the Jewish people reject the king and his kingdom, and then God started dealing with the Gentile nation, and it's been going on ever since. But in, in chapter 13, it will end. God will no longer deal uh, with the, the, the Gentile nation. Uh, it will be primarily the Jewish people during this time. And then, of course, uh, we see the fiery furnace. Uh, you, we'll see there it's a type of the Great Tribulation a period. Uh, when, uh, a period when the Jews will go through uh, various trials of affliction. There'll be trials and things that goes on among the Jewish people that they've never experienced before going into the tribulation period. Uh, and might say this, uh, there's two parts of the tribulation. Three and a half years will be more peaceful, uh, but the latter part of the three and a half years is going to be when when the great tribulation starts and we see the Jewish people are going to be uh, in, uh, going through trials and tribulation and through the fires and different things like that. And you can read it about in uh, Hebrews chapter 11 in the latter part where the Bible talks about how the Jewish people are what they're going to experience and, and things like that uh, and what and how they'll go through it, and how they've been killed, and, and sawed asunder, and all like that. And, and, and then, of course, uh, the tribulation period uh, is going to be a, a tremendous uh, time for the Jewish people. They've never faced that before. And then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they're the type of the, uh, of the remnant, uh, the Jewish remnant that will appear uh, and, of course, they are the ones that are going to be preserved during the Great Tribulation. And, of course, I think you will remember that I mentioned them before. The 144,000, uh, uh, tw uh, 12,000 out of each tribe it will make up the 144,000 that will be sealed uh, during this time. And uh, they will be preserved. Uh, you know, the devil... and. Uh, uh, the devil will try, every, and the Antichrist and the false prophet will, uh, will try everything in the world to kill these, uh, these people, the 144,000. But they're there for a reason. And the reason is that they will uh, get out or preach of the message of the gospel of the kingdom. Not the gospel of grace, but the gospel of the kingdom during this time. And so here we see that they, they will be preaching that Revelation chapter 7. You can read about it there. Uh, then it goes on to say in Revelation 15, uh, we see that the remnant, the 144,000, are going to be rejoicing uh, after the tribulation period is over. They're going to be rejoicing in victory over the beast, the false prophet, and Antichrist, uh, the image uh, it will have no effect upon them. The mark of the beast, no effect upon them. And so we see they're able to overcome the, the, uh, the uh, image and the false prophet, the uh, antichrist, and, and different ones like that. They'll be able to overcome all of that. And, of course, they will be in victory. They'll be in victory. And so we see that the, the you will remember the most mighty men, in chapter 3, how that they were putting the, uh, the three Hebrews in, into the fire and how God slew them, killed them. Well, they're the type, uh, they're the type of the, 
uh, of the ones that are burn up, are burned up in the fiery furnace. And of course, their death is the type of a uh, final doom, the final doom of, of the beast, the false prophet, Antichrist, and Satan, where that they will be they will be placed into the lake of fire forever and ever. Revelation 19. Uh, tells us about that. And of course, uh, we see that uh, although Babylon will be destroyed, it's going to be destroyed, just like the Tower of Babel, that was the beginning of the Babylonian uh, uh, system. The Babylonian system began with ne uh, 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 ne I can't even think about, can't say it now, uh, Nimrod. And Nimrod, it started with him when he built a tower uh, to heaven, and he thought that was going to be the, the one world uh, where the, everybody will worship that tower and things like that. Well, it fell, and then Nebuchadnezzar is going to fall, but the Babylonian system continues, and it continues till this day, where that they are worshiping images where that they're uh, blaspheming against God and things like that. They tell, they'll tell you the Bible is not true. It's a, a, just a, a myth and all like that. Uh, it, it, that's what they're, they're banking on. But that system continues to go on. But we'll see the end of it where it says, and, and of course we referred to this, uh, the fall of great Babylon, the harlot. The harlot church will be defeated one day, and that will culminate of uh, the Babylonian system when that is destroyed. And then, of course, we go into the, the, the kingdom, an age where uh, the Lord will rule and reign. He'll be king of kings and all like that. And so we see that the, uh, the Babylonian system will keep on spreading around about, and, and that's why I say don't be surprised if you hear of a city somewhere in this world that is called Babylon again. I, I believe that there's going to be a, 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 a uprising and where that they're going to go to that city, and then we see that it will be revived once again. That's not in Scripture. That's my thinking, okay? That's just me, what I think is going to happen. And so as we close down chapter 3 and look at chapter 4, um, I, I tell you, it's exciting what chapter 4 brings about. And so uh, read it and, uh, and then be prepared uh, to listen next week, okay? But thank you for coming. Ones at home, we're glad you joined in with us. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for your marvelous grace. And Lord, we thank you that you've chosen us, that we've been redeemed. And Lord, I, I pray that you would help us, Lord, to get out the word. And uh, Lord, that uh, we could praise you and rejoice in you and tell others about what a great God that we have. And Lord, I just pray that you'd have your will and way in the morning service, for we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, you're dismissed.